for you, Pete. Oh, well, it was my fault, dear. I kidnapped him. I sometimes do that with attractive young men. <laughs> hey, where's Liz? Oh, she went to a counselor's conference. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Good morning. I want to thank you all for coming here this morning, especially since it was voluntary. I'll get right to the point. As some of you know, Whitman High is cooperating with the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health in launching a really serious campaign against the number one teenage health problem today, venereal disease. Now, we need teachers. It's as simple as that. I might as well give you the rough part first. Those who are interested would have to attend a seminar this weekend where you'll be given special materials, techniques of instruction. Ms. Johnson? Where will the seminar be held, Mr. Kaufman? Well, I'd like to say Hawaii with all expenses paid, but it's Anaheim. <laughs> Mr. Gerard. Uh, Mr. Kaufman, uh, say we give up a weekend and go to this seminar. Is it going to do any good? Well, I mean, uh, other schools have tried to start these classes, but there's so much red tape involved. Then we're just going to have to cut through the red tape, Mr. Gerard. One out of five graduating seniors in Los Angeles County has some form of venereal disease. One out of five? The national figure is one out of 10 youngsters between the ages of 15 and 24 will contract venereal disease this year. Wow, that's really shocking. Are you gonna go? Oh, well, I'd like to, but uh, I promised to help my mother move this weekend. What we're asking of you is this weekend plus three hours a week for the next several months. I know that's rough, but on the other side of the ledger, you'll have the satisfaction of knowing that you're helping to fight against a terrible disease. Any volunteers? I'll go. Well, what's the matter with the rest of you? Didn't you hear, Mr. Kaufman? One out of five children in this county is sick. Now, if he were talking about polio and you could do something to prevent it, you'd all be raising your hands, wouldn't you? Well, that's better. Miss Johnson. Oh, yes. Thank you, Miss Huggins. This respect for the individual in democracy lay at the roots of the reform movement, which you have read about in this chapter. You mean you have read about in this chapter? I beg your pardon, Jason. Well, what he's trying to say is that Mr. Dixon usually lets us rap about the material in the book, Mr. Gerard. Mr. Gerard? Yes, Kim. Well, you said Mr. Dixon was attending a conference, but you didn't say how long he'd be gone. And, well, we were just wondering when... He... Uh, when you can start rapping again. Yeah. Tomorrow. What kind of a conference is it? Uh, venereal disease, actually. Uh, Whitman High will be offering classes in how to prevent... Uh, any such occurrence occurring. <laughs> uh, Mr. Dixon will be back tomorrow. Hey, Joe Bob. Hey, did you bring a guitar today? Yep. Good, because I wanted you to teach me the chords that thing you were playing the other day, okay? Sure doesn't talk much, does he? Nope. Cindy. Oh, hi, Joe Bob. Could I see you a minute? Sure. <laughs> uh, you know, I was uh, telling you how I was doing some whittling. And, uh, well, I, I just thought you might like this little bird here. Gee, that's very sweet of you, Joe Bob. What kind of a uh, bird is this exactly? I mean, it, it looks like a... Uh... That's a chicken. Can you tell that? <laughs> well, I haven't seen a whole lot of them. Would you like to go to the movies tonight? I can't tonight. But I'll tell you what. 
if you can get tickets for that rock concert Thursday night, maybe I can make it. Well, right fine then, okay. That's the deal now. Now, what I'm going to require of you in this composition is more than just grammar and punctuation and spelling. I want to see the inside of your heads. I want to share your fantasies with you. In short, don't be afraid to use your imaginations. Uh, take off. In your case, perhaps a little less imagination and a little more attention to the proper use of the subjunctive clause. Gotcha, Miss Huggins. <laughs> Oh, uh, Joe Bob, would you help me here a minute? Be a pleasure, ma'am. I thought if you put this box up on the desk, I'd put some of the posters up. Thank you. Joe Bob? Yes, ma'am. You suppose I could have some of them pamphlets for a friend of mine? Of course you can. Your friend going to sign up for the clinic? No, ma'am. He'd like to, but his daddy, my, my friend's daddy, sure wouldn't go for it. I see. Bob? Have your friend read these and tell him to see this doctor right away, just in case. Well, ma'am, I, I don't know about that. Well, it's a free clinic, Joe Bob. Parents don't have to be notified. That's the law. Well, I sure will tell him. Much obliged. I mean, here we are, educators in the middle of an epidemic. And, well, we discover, well, at least I did anyway, that I know hardly anything about the subject. I'll second that. <laughs> did you know that a woman may have gonorrhea for years, pass it on to other people, never even know she has it? No, as a matter of fact, I didn't. The symptoms are slight and they pass in a few days. Only a blood test will reveal the infection. And yet this disease, easily cured by penicillin, has made more people blind than any other disease except a coma. And it's all totally preventable. Just by getting more information around. Which is more easily said than done. Yes, that's what I meant about red tape. I'm glad you're here, Jerry. You can help. Oh, certainly, Mr. Kaufman. I'm always happy to uh, help. Doing what? Oh, probably stuffing envelopes. Pete, uh, you're in charge of getting the notices on. Uh, uh, what notices? Notices to the parents. Well, there goes two weeks before we can even get started. Better make that three weeks, because by the time the notices have been signed and returned, and you've heard from all the parents who want to see your material, it'll take longer than you think. Will someone tell me what you're talking about? What we're talking about is the section of the educational code which says that parents have to be notified in writing before their kids can come to a class in which human reproduction is mentioned. Human reproduction? Uh, well, yes, I see that, but uh, uh, what has that got to do with um, VD? It's a different subject with a different approach, but the law says we need parental consent to talk about it. Also, all the written material and the visual aids that you're going to use in the course have to be made available to the parents for their inspection before the class starts. To my mind, it's a tragedy. Miss Huggins, I don't think that everything that's in here is just right. You know what I mean? No, I don't, Joe Bob. Tell me. This ain't the kind of thing a fellow likes to talk about with a woman. Oh, for heaven's sake, Joe Bob, pretend I'm your old grandma and let's get on with it. Yes, ma'am. Well, it says here that a person can only catch the disease from being intimate with someone who's got it. 
Well, that is correct. But that ain't the way I heard it, I tell you. The girl I love and me never did nothing before. Now, how do you explain that? Well, it may take a while. Sit down, Joe Bob. Mr. Tully found this VD literature in his son's car. Did you give it to him? Of course I did. Of course you did. And did you also have a few impromptu classes with the boy? You darn tootin'. I don't know what's been going on in that boy's home life, but certainly the facts of life have not been included in the curriculum. I'm afraid they're not fully included in ours either, Miss Hudson. Well, you know what I meant by that, Mr. Kaufman. The boy was sick, and he didn't know what in the world was wrong with him, nor could he possibly imagine how he got that way. Look, Miss Huggins, look, I'm on your side 100%. I know you tried to help, but you know we have to have signed parental consent. So we're in hot water, huh? I'm afraid so. Mr. Tully called his minister, who called his lawyer. He feels you've violated the law. They've filed charges against you with the State Board of Education. I am always prepared to answer for the consequences of my actions. Although they sometimes surprise me. So, if I am called to appear, I will answer the charges in detail. Well, if it's any consolation, I'll be there too, okay? So will I. I don't like the law any better than you do. Vivian, you understand that until the law is changed, we're just stuck with the responsibility of upholding it. Let me ask you something. Since you've established this relationship with the boy, do you suppose you could possibly get him to reveal his contact? You see, the public health officer was here. And I don't have to tell you how important it is to let the girl know so she can get treatment. No, you don't have to tell me. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. I don't believe what you people are telling me. What's the worst thing that could happen if the state board does decide to take action? She could lose her certification to teach permanently. That woman has devoted her entire life to teaching. She never wanted to stop. She just wanted to go on substituting until she was like 100 or something. If they put her out to pasture for the rest of her life, it would kill her. Just because of one little mistake? Well, this is not fair. Excuse me. What for? We all feel the same way. You just said it. I'm sorry if what I have to say hurts you. Keeping silent the name of a girl who has a disease and needs treatment is not helping her. No, ma'am. You're not going to snook at me that way. I learned lots of things different since my daddy and me left Manassas. And I guess I've been sort of a figure of fun to some people. But there's one thing ain't nobody going to tell me is right when I know it's wrong. You don't go shooting your mouth off about a lady. Even if she ain't. You can relax, Joe Bob. Someone else uh, mentioned her name. She's been very cooperative. Yeah. I bet she has. I sure wish I could help him. So do I. Right now, I would prefer you to be thinking about yourself. The Board of Education just called me. There's a preliminary hearing set for you at 1 o'clock downtown on Monday. You know something? I'm just mad enough to be ready for a good fight. Miss Huggins? Yes, sir. You've heard the charges read against you which maintained that you willfully and deliberately violated section 8506 of the California Educational Code. We're prepared to hear your statement now. Well, that's very kind of you, I'm sure. Well, since the law which I'm accused of violating became effective two years ago, I find 
that only 1% of the parents in other districts objected. This obviously shows overwhelming approval, but it also shows us something a little sad. 115,000 cases of VD among high school kids were reported last year, and assume 1% of the parents refused permission for their child to receive education this year, we may then assume at least 1,150 young people may contact VD needlessly next year. I find that puzzling. We have a law in this state and in many other states too, which says that a young person ill with VD can receive treatment without his parents being notified. But he can't receive VD education, so he won't need treatment in the same fashion. Seems all turned around to me. So, after 40 years, I've finally broken a rule. I never did before. I didn't mean to break this one, but a boy called out for help and I answered. I'm sorry. It is not a good rule. I have sat here just about long enough. Is it my turn to talk yet? Are you finished, Miss Huggins? I'll yield to Mr. Tully. Well, I don't know how things are where you people come from. But I'll tell you what I believe. There ain't no school anywhere fit to teach the kind of things you're talking about. A boy wants to know about that kind of stuff, he asks his daddy. And you have no right to take my place. And I don't need your help to do my job kind of stuff you're talking about belongs in the home. And I didn't send my boy to school to get no sex education. May I speak to that point, please? Very well, Mr. Dixon. Mr. Tully, you couldn't be more wrong. I don't mean about your right as a parent, but VD education is not sex education. It's education designed to prevent a serious and crippling disease. And it belongs in a course relating to other communicable diseases, such as TB, typhoid, and polio. We don't need to make moral judgments, and we shouldn't. We don't want to violate your right as a parent, either. We're only trying to do a job that you've entrusted us with, and that is to teach. I would like for the room to be cleared now so that the other members of the board and I can come to our decision. Very good, Vivian. Very Thank good. you. Good luck, Vivian. Thank you. Thank you. I got my fingers crossed so tight I'm getting whiplash in my knuckles. <laughs> oh, I'm so nervous. I've been speaking to my boy. He's mighty fond of you. Well, to tell you the truth, I didn't think you'd be so... Well, I thought you'd be one of them young upstart types. I'm sorry to cause you so much trouble, considering you're... That I'm as old as the hills? Is that what you're trying to say, Mr. Tully? Well, I'll never believe what you did was right. But I can see you didn't mean no personal harm. So I wish you well. Thank you. Excuse me. I'm just as sorry as I can be, Miss Huggins. I know you are, honey. Don't you worry about it. It is the judgment of this committee that this case not be referred to the state board. Uh, there will be a fine. You will be notified in writing. And I would like your solemn promise that there will be no further violation of our existing code. No matter what any of us think of it. Agreed? Wholeheartedly. <clears throat> Mr. Tully. 